Well mighty, it's about time that we finally get onto the forms within the final cup in the whole entire game for the second time but on hard mode this time around. So hey, what's up ladies and gentlemen, it is I am the one and only Ray the Flying Squirrel here and I'm Mighty the Armadillo here welcome you all back for the likes of the Mercy Toys videos once again. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for some more of Let's Play of Mario Slam Basketball, aka Mario Hoops 3 on 3, for those of you left in North America, and for those of you left in Japan, Mario Basketball 3 on 3 for the Nintendo DS. So, last Sunday, we did somehow manage to able to win through the Star Tourney once again, except the fact that we did accomplish it on hard mode, and oh no, it's purely chaotic, especially no spoil in Bowser's Castle case. So in some cases though, today for this video is the fact that we're going to be hit on to straight to the point where we're now on to the final cup in hard mode, which meaning about the fact that we're still able to actually experiencing, uh, you know what I mean, the uh, four courts throughout the whole entire tournament, which are, uh, you know what I mean, Sherbet Land, and um, also Blue Jeep Sea, and also Pirate Ship, and finally Rainbow Ship towards the end. So, yeah, because potentially speaking, this is the final cup in the whole entire game, and generally speaking, this is the second time we're going to be able to experience the Rainbow Tourney, which meaning about the fact that every once in a while, the computer, uh, the computer opponents, I meant to say, they are going to get a lot more aggressive now, especially because you know how the fact that this is the finale cup in the game, as to be expected. Well, for the most part, it's self-explanatory. It wasn't until when it gets to the point until the fact that they now start to able to actually just to have a vendetta against you, where it comes to likely about the fact that they just keep on, like, blocking your shots, or, in some cases, they keep on attacking you, using so many emphasis on items sometimes. And relatively speaking, though, it is definitely one of the hardest cups in the game, in my opinion. Especially considerably about the fact that, not only because of its, uh, computer player behavior, but also certain stages that we actually stumbled across into, like Sherbet Land, we still need to able to rely on the forms of Ice Physics, and in the forms of in Blue Cheap Sea, that we have to rely on the forms of some very slow movement, especially when underwater and stuff like that. And as far as Pirate Ship goes, that we do need to avoid a lot of cannonballs, because otherwise it'll cause an explosion. And for the most part, in Rainbow Ship, it's self-explanatory, like we said this before, ever since about roughly two weeks ago. That's uh, it's just about the fact that matter is though, the computer pl players are actually going to get a lot tougher at this point. Especially that if you somehow manage to able to lose the match, basically you have to redo the entire match. Well, luckily it does have a save system, so you can able to actually like, well, keep on trying if you keep messing things up or something like that. So there's no penalty if you do somehow manage to able to lose the tournament or anything else like that. Unlike something related to very old school games, that basically though is the fact that it can be very archaic at times when it comes to likely for Even though it's hard to explain because it's been about six days ago since we've actually last played this, pretty much. But uh, exponentially though, once we're done with the forms of this particular Rainbow Tony, then we can pretty much guarantee we can able to move on to the fun stuff during the forms of it tomorrow and potentially next weekend for the final few parts for the sake of the forms of uh, Mario Slam Basketball itself. And that's what appears to be the extra stuff so but that won't be until for a little while until potentially speaking if we able to get get some things planned out for so yeah anyway though so yeah a few things we want to explain while this is happening is the fact that well today's date is of course the uh the 28th of january today in this case in 2023 today we only got about four more days to go until we basically moved on to February. And on top of that, only three more days to go until SpongeBob SquarePants The Cosmic Shake is going to be on its way for multiple platforms. So yeah, are you guys are looking forward to able to playing the SpongeBob SquarePants The Cosmic Shake uh, game? Because it certainly is worth a wait after three years, or potentially speaking, about uh, two years since when it first announced back in the forms of events, let's just say since in 2021 or something like this. Mind you, it's been a very long while since I actually watched something related to the forms of certain announcement trailers, because obviously about the fact that, well, generally speaking, I'm just so excited with the forms of certain other things coming out for it, so, but I digress. 
And uh, the next thing I want to point out is the fact that, well, get ready for the sake of the forms of this particular year, folks, is that apparently, though, that Sonic Prime, the next selections of episodes, is going to be later on going to be arriving this year. So, potentially speaking, though, because after the events of since in, uh, you know, December last year, that uh, somehow we ended up in the uh, the eighth episode at the moment. But hopefully, though, we're able to get some more episodes later down the line for the sake of the forms of the majority of 2023, which is a good sign. Especially because about the fact that I'm pretty sure we might do the same thing for the likes of, uh, well, My Little Pony Make Your Mark series. Well, despite the fact that we uh, rarely remembered it, unlike any forms of how it does not in Sonic Prime, at least as far as for our personal opinions about, especially because about the fact there's no one near us like a full-on masterpiece or anything else like that, but either way though, let's just go ahead and pull off a special shot for Luigi, because it's pretty obvious that it makes things a bit easier. Speaking of these uh, player choices this time, for the sake of the forms of the Rainbow Tourney, that basically we, in addition to able to bring him back uh, Luigi, as you can see, we also managed to able to decide to bring back Mario, because he's obviously the main character, of course, throughout the majority of the game. And also we managed to able to bring in Fly Guy to the table, because obviously we've now unlocked him after the events of, uh, well, Stark Tourney in Hard Mode. And also you can able to actually change the uh, one of those three colors you can able to choose for Fly Guy. But either way though, that might be saying something, because much like Yoshi, then you can potentially try to use the directional pad to, uh, you know, three different colors of your choice of uh, between Yoshi and Fly Guy. So, but I digress. And, uh... Something I'm worth noting for is the fact that, I think potentially speaking though, is the fact that for what I've looked upon something uh, just recently about the fact the matter is though, is the fact that when it comes to like uh, film box offices at the moment, is the fact that, oh, although I'll get to more details about that in a moment, because recently we actually stumbled across a new trailer for the likes of the animated film for the sake of the forms of stuff related to Batman, which basically Batman the Doom that came to Gotham is going to be coming this year. So, yeah, pretty cool and interesting at the same time. Well, mind you, I haven't exactly watched stuff related to Batman stuff for quite some time. But I do definitely heard about good things about the forms of that particular last year's uh, The Batman movie. But hopefully we'll get around to that at some point in our own time. Just to ensure that we will be able to give our chance that we can able to catch up on, you know, watching some more Batman stuff. But either way, we somehow win in Showbit Land. So thankfully we don't need to worry about these very crazy ice physics here and there. So now we can move on to Blue Cheap Sea for possibly the final time for this entire run of uh, Tourney Mode, and uh, you know, like I said, if we pretty much done with the forms of the majority of the Tourney Mode, then basically though we can start moving on to some extras for this game actually has to offer. But except the fact that unfortunately though we can't show off multiplayer stuff because of the lack of the communication or the lack of wireless play features um, on the forms of the Wii U virtual console re-release or somewhat. So yeah, unfortunately though we didn't get the chance to do it. So, but I digress. So, as you probably already know, is the fact that we've already faced off against with uh, not only Bodo, but also Donkey Kong and uh, Paratrooper as well in uh, Sherpin Land. But now we're going to be faced off against with uh, Dixie Kong alongside with Waluigi and possibly Yoshi as well, because obviously I can see, you know, the light blue color of Yoshi and stuff. So, I can see that little, uh, you know, the actual color scheme for him. So. Not only will I explain about this weirdly enough though, because again, it's been six days ago since uh, we've last played this. Because I'm pretty sure that the moment right now, about the fact that unfortunately though, Maxi is still carry on going for the forms of one of his worst levels in the game, in uh, Donkey Kong 64, which appears to be a uh, gloomy galleon. So because of that though, again, expecting about the fact that God knows of how long he will able to complete the world, but it's all depending on the forms of the time, or specifically when it comes to that tedious uh, uh, banana locations. And on top of that, getting lost in that particular world is super easily uh, addressed. So, 
And on top of that, that uh, Sonic did somehow manage to able to complete it, uh, the main story in terms of uh, Ape Escape. Well, mind you, he's not going to able to complete the game yet. Although, mind you, about the fact that he's still got, you know, some more ca uh, monkeys to catch. And on top of that, some more Spectre coins he's still need able to continuously try to find. But either way, though, it can take a while to able to actually complete certain less plays like these, which. Either way, though, that might be some consumption. Well, the longest one so far, anyway, it still has to be by the forms of Donkey Kong 64, just because it's a 3D game, and it's also about the fact that it might actually go around the same length, possibly, from the likes of in Banjo 2E sometimes. But either way, though, we shall definitely see what happens in due time for the sake of the forms of the majority of, uh, you know, Donkey Kong 64 Let's Play, as far as that's been concerned with, so... But I digress. So, anywho, and I do apologize for that particular ringtone from the likes of the forms of our fact on my phone at the moment. I'm pretty sure it's most likely because about the fact that, well, generally speaking though, I believe um, Bubbles did somehow text me a message and stuff like that saying how I was and stuff like that. But either way though, everything else goes all fine for the most part. Even though, despite the fact that, well, relatively speaking though, uh, as far as one of I did looked upon the forms of the box office's updates at the moment, that uh, back in the forms of in 2022, that uh, we did have uh, quite a lot of those uh, animated uh, films and stuff like that, something related to not only for Disney, but also DreamWorks as well. Well, mind you about the fact that what I've looked upon those four, uh, different uh, films within two separate uh, film companies in mind, which are both Disney and DreamWorks. Because the reason why I pointed things out is the fact that apparently, though, the actual box office performance when it comes to likely for those four films combined somewhat feels a bit more opposite. Why I did manage to look things up, but basically, though, I've already um, pointed things out about the fact that you guys even remember about the fact that it's kind of unfortunate that the Lightyear movie gets a box office bond, and same applies to the forms of Strange Worlds, despite the fact that I'm not really a massive fan of the forms of Strange Worlds, because it just feels a bit generic for me. And on top of that, I'd much rather just watch uh, Big Hero 6 a lot more, because I can agree to you for the sake of time, is the fact that while the movie itself is okay, but it's just about the fact that it's definitely one of my least favorite movies in terms of like, well, let's just say, during the forms of in the 2020s era of Disney movies or something. Although, I will have to admit it though, is the fact that Encanto is probably my favorite uh, so far. Well, despite the fact that the box office has been bombed just because of the forms of that particular, well, limited time release for the sake of the forms of on the big screen and stuff like that. That might be the only reason for it. And on top of all of that, all that stuff though, is that, ooh, we can probably get another basket in, especially that we've actually pulled off a special shot right here, so I think generally speaking though, I potentially use Luigi a lot more in this game, just because of his special shot is actually pretty easy to execute, especially it spells like an L, so yeah, that makes a little bit more obvious sense, kind of think about it, because obviously L is like, well, you know, Luigi, that's all there is to, to it. But I digress, and um, yeah, because relatively speaking, though, it's about the fact that, well, usually for Lightyear, it's the fact that, well, the budget of the movie was actually in, uh, uh, 200 million dollars, but then ultimately, though, the box office has been bombed, and because of that, though, the box office for that film was actually 226.4 million, which is not by much, but that doesn't even compare to the forms of Strange Worlds, which, as a result, the budget for the film was actually 135 or 180 uh, dollar, uh, million dollars. Well, as a result though, that the box office performance of Strange World is actually even worse. Like for instance, they did somehow say 72.8 million uh, dollars for its box office, which, yeah, I can totally see why I'm not gonna able to see Strange World at the end of the day, but either way though, potentially speaking and stuff like that, that's all I can really uh, try to say about this. Unlike something related to the forms of two of those DreamWorks movies, which there are, the bad guys, alongside with Puss in Boots' The Last Wish, they somehow managed to receive very well for the box office. Well, surprisingly enough, because as a result, uh, the budget of, uh, you know, the bad guys is actually in 
uh, 69 million dollars or 80 million dollars, but then the box office did somehow own for the likes of, well, 250.5 million dollars for its box office performance in uh, The Bad Guys, which I might as well able to give that film a, uh, a try, to able to actually just to give that a view perspective, because it does look very promising, especially how the reviews has actually gone ridiculously high for its uh, review scores and stuff like that. But, it wasn't until when Puss in Boots The Last Wish did somehow manage to able to now exist in North America. Well, mind you, we're still waiting for the UK's release in June. Uh, a couple of days now. So, potentially speaking, I'm still very excited to be able to see Puss in Boots The Last Wish because I still heard about some very, very exciting things to be able to come across into for that film, despite I'm not going to spoil that much to it, though, because, again, the film has not been out on the UK yet. But, um... Relatively speaking though, because that film is actually in 90, um, 90 million dollars for its budget, but for the box office though, at least especially noticeable, it will continue until by that time comes, that it did receive 263 million dollars, so pretty cool I might add, especially no wonder because of the fact that the, uh, the film's review is actually a, a massive success, uh, compared to the faults of how it does it in the original film, at least for some uh, capacity. Well, don't get me wrong, I still enjoy the first film though, but hopefully though, when the second film is roll around in the UK cinema, then hopefully though, we can able to actually re-watch the first film again before we dive right into the sequel, so that makes it a little bit obvious sense, kind of think about it. So, speaking of box office though, is the fact that why I've double checked on that specific update, so far anyway, at, at least according to the forms of how the fact that I did manage to look things up since in, uh, well, the 13th of January, likely or so for about a few weeks ago. That apparently, though, is the fact that there was actually a massive update in terms of 2022 films for box office departments. Like, for instance, uh, Black Panther was now beating the Batman for its box office. Like, usually at this point in time, it's now on to, like, 837 uh, million um, dollars, something like that. Well, luckily though, it's about, about the fact of the matter is though, we haven't got that far left until, uh, well, that film is now definitely coming onto Disney Plus. So, it's kind of a shame we didn't get to see it in the forms of in a big screen just because of time constraints. So as a result, it will be a good opportunity that we can able to actually look upon the film on Disney Plus at long last. So, pretty swell if you say so, mighty. Yeah, absolutely, especially because after seeing, you know, Black Panther back in the forms of in uh, last year, then we can definitely cannot wait to able to watch uh, the second film in the series, despite, uh, you know what I mean with the fact that one of those actors dies uh, during the forms of the cancer since in, uh, during the lockdown. Yeah, I can assure you for this point, mighty. I can assure you for this point right there. But, uh... That doesn't even compare, though, because, relatively speaking, that, um, apparently, out of nowhere, that somehow Top Gun Maverick is no longer at the number one spot in terms of the box office department, because, uh, Top Gun Maverick is now on the second spot in terms of the forms of the box office performance for the likes of 2022. Well, it still did pretty well for the likes of Top Gun, uh, Maverick, but, however though, it's been replaced by Avatar The Way of Water, which at this point in time, that film is almost at the point where it's almost at 2 billion. So, gee, it does kind of remind me of 2009 all over again, kind of think about it, with the first film in the series, which I can assure to you, it might well continue that tradition until specifically God knows the third film will be on its way in uh, 2024. So th I can imagine that will be a massive competition between not only Avatar 3, but also with Sonic the Hedgehog 3 in the exact same year, in the exact same time. So God knows whoever actually received a lot more box office, well... Suffice to say, I think it might potentially be Avatar 3, I can assure you to that, which it won't be that much surprising, because considering about the fact, I honestly have no idea why, that that film has actually gone in a massive box office at the moment for 2022 for, uh, you know, Avatar The Way of Water. I guess that makes sense just because of everyone is so begging for the sequel after the events of the first film came out in 2009. 
So, yeah, better late than never, I guess. Although, generally speaking, though, it's just about the fact of the matter is, though, is that, well, despite the fact that we still haven't seen the film yet, but don't worry, we will promise you guys, we will get around to it at some point, even though, no, let's just hope we might as well wait until God knows they'll able to list it that in Journey Forms within Disney Plus, eventually, during at some point throughout the whole year. But either way, though, we'll shall see what happens in due time, so. But, uh, anywho, so, um,. I suppose another thing I should probably explain about this actually though is the fact that relatively speaking that um, I think it's been about, um, I don't know about you because I know for a fact that it's been quite a few uh, days or something like that since we actually discussed upon things. That uh, basically though, I think that uh, um, I would classify with saying that Max D or should I say Sonic that uh, he did somehow mention something related to the forms of uh, there was a game called uh, Dokapon Kingdom Connect that has already been confirmed for Japan for the Nintendo Switch. Apparently though, not long after for the Japanese release of the game is going to be expected able to come out during uh, sometime in April 13th or something like that. It also as it turns out that the English version also receives the actual game until on spring this year. So God knows what day that will be at for the English uh, Western release of the game. So yeah, pretty cool and pretty substantial at the same time. But despite the fact that we haven't exactly looked upon that much uh, Let's Plays of that game, aside from the Runaway Guys, which they obviously played the Wii version of the game, just because about the fact that, well, despite there are some uh, disc reading problems, for I've looked upon the forms of several parts, but that's just the way how it is when it comes to, like, second-hand games. And it's also, that's what uh, Sonic has already mentioned about this before, I guess, that uh, obviously the Wii version is going to get a bit, a bit more expensive, which we're hoping that the Switch version doesn't reach up to its high expectations for uh, highest price tag, but uh, let's just hope that won't be seems the case, so... But we shall see. But anyways, we've meet up with the rainbow ship again, and once again we're being ambushed by not only Ninja, but also White Mage and Black Mage. Now, as far as these certain matches we've actually been through for the sake of the forms of Mario Slam Basketball so far, I think I will say this right about right about now, that uh, Rainbow Tourney Extra Match is by far the hardest match in the whole entire game. Well, I'm referring to as the hard difficulty, and maybe a little bit on normal mode essentially as well, because what makes this match a bit difficult compared to the forms of the normal counterparts is that, as I said before, the computer players can get, get a lot more aggressive this time. In addition to that though, is the fact that for the love of god, they must have now pull off some advanced techniques, which as a result, we couldn't normally do it from the likes of in a practice menu, but we were able to try to pull this off eventually though, on our own time anyway. And on top of all that stuff though, as we said this countless amount of times, certain computer players can now able to actually pull off a special shot. So as a result though, and also they basically know exactly what they're doing. So because of that though, prepare yourselves a lot of frustration on this match, especially that I believe that Sonic did actually tell me during that time where once he did manage to play or experience the hard mode on uh, any of those cups in uh, Mario Sports Mix, he did got a lot of rage quitting moments back in 2011 if possible, which I can assure to you about the fact that I couldn't imagine if we were able to experience uh, Sports Mix mode uh, with an expert mode will be an absolute painful process. Although, mind you, about the fact that it kind of feels like, uh, kind of like the equivalent to the forms of in uh, uh, super hard mode from the likes of in Sonic Heroes a little bit. Well, mind you, about the fact the matter is though, it has been a very long while since we actually did somehow last play the Mario Sports Mix. Since in 2014, despite the fact that that particular um, you know, redo let's play of that particular game during 2014 is no longer there. Clearly because the quality is a bit average, while at the same time the qual the commentary looks a bit bad. And not to mention though, is the fact that we got screwed over by the forms that particular 15 uh, minute time limit. So, it's a bit strict in my opinion. So, but potentially speaking though, since we're still on 2023, then we still managed to able to get up to like, 
more than 50 minutes, which we do appreciate about this particular system, because, well, I remember, uh, I believe that Sonic did actually tell me during that time where, uh, once that, uh, both, uh, Sonic and Piglet do usually do Mario Party 10 back in 2015, despite what the forms of the average quality back in the day, despite, you know, that the old version of that particular Let's Play of Mario Party 10 is no longer there, because thankfully for the 2020 version, did somehow take over, thanks to the forms of the better, uh, quality, and on top of that, better commentary as well, and you name the rest. So, either way, though, that might be saying something, so... But, uh, yeah, everything else goes all, like, pretty swell as far as everything else goes. Although, there's actually, technically, though, is the fact that, ah, oh, son of a biscuit. Although, that's perfectly fine, because they've only got just 22 points. But, uh, yeah, it's just about the fact that sometimes, if you really want to unlock everything, best be sure they're able to actually just be, uh, pull off some advanced techniques. And occasionally, though, just don't go and dribble the, uh, the question mark panels like all the time because keep that in mind computer players can get a bit more aggressive like I said this before especially considering about the fact that well sometimes they like to able to throw you off at points even if you're trying to able to instantly try to able to dunk the actual basket as you go well as I said before is the fact that this stage doesn't seem to able to have stage hazards or anything else like that unlike any forms of how it does in the previous three stages so yeah, it's just about the fact that this particular match might take a bit while, especially that, uh, thankfully it's still on 2 minutes and 30 seconds with a, uh, a default, uh, time limit. Although, the only way you can able to actually adjust the game settings within the forms of how much sets you're gonna have to pull off through, and on top of that, how much time you're gonna have to set up for, you can only set these up by the forms of the exhibition mode, which, again, we'll show that off in the forms of tomorrow from the first extra videos we can show off, so... Yeah, that's as far as I can try to explain about the forms of, uh... Today's discussion, especially because, you know, we're getting very close towards the end of this game right now. Especially that once we're done with that, then we can move on to something else. Because let me tell you, I feel a little bit hand cramped at the moment after playing this game for so many hours on attempting to able to do some more recording sessions during that time. And let me tell you though, it's just about the fact that it's just, you know, the control scheme might take a bit while to able to get a accustomed to. Like, let's just say right now, it might not be for everyone when it comes to likely for its, you know, control scheme like these, so... Which, thankfully though, it wasn't until whenever we do a redo Let's Play for the third time for, uh, Mario Sports Mix with the, uh, the much more better quality, imagine that. That, thankfully though, the controls won't be nearly as, uh, cramped as the forms of how it does it in Slam Basketball though, at least for my opinion, so... But I will still say this right now, the visuals do look absolutely good, even for on the Nintendo DS, despite its, uh, very pixelated models here and there. But regards to such though, it's about the fact the matter is though, it's just, well, I'll explain more on my final thoughts of the game, until whenever we finish up the entirety of this entire tourney mode. Well, again, we're not gonna able to end off the Let's Play just off from that, because obviously, like we said before, we will still show off some of these extra stuff of how this game offers us to. Oh, and by the way, something's worth mentioning, if you think you're about to be winning so far, and especially noticeable, you really don't want to let the computer players manage to able to catch up to you, well, I think suffice to say, try to play this a bit more defensively, especially because if you play this, like, offensively, basically, though, you will get a chance that you will get screwed over by several of computer players, and they will try to steal your ball if you're not careful, so... Yeah, but gently speaking though, I'm just gonna play it safe, because obviously I'm not gonna do, like, extreme hardcores with it. The only time it's a little bit stingy though, is the fact that if the item system comes into play, then obviously we will be able to actually get zapped, or in some cases, worst of all, get owned by the Star Man itself. Potentially speaking though, that is definitely one of the hardest matches we've actually sit through so far. Especially because, well, to be expected, it's just the very end of the game, so that's nothing too, uh, groundbreaking to say things like that. But there we go, we've got ourselves the final trophy in the game, and that basically concludes the entire tourney mode, so... Yeah, especially noticeable, we always have to concentrate on specific, uh, segments worth noting for, 
but regardless of such though, I think there is actually a special reward if you do manage to able to complete not only the rest of the tourney mode, but also if you manage to able to get the golden trophy as well for the rainbow tourney itself. Which, mind you, we're well pointing out whenever we get to that point, because as you can tell, we've once again onto the staff credit sequence, except now, they obviously brings us into some different, uh, snippets and clips in the bottom screen, and then certain screenshots in the top screen in a second, or any moment's notice. Although, generally speaking though, it does kind of remind me of a similar trend as the new forms of it, not only in Super Mario Galaxy, but um, also with other games as well, if I'm assuming so anyway. Mind you, it's been about, you know, like I said before, six days ago since we've last played this for sure. Just because, you know, after taking multiple breaks for all that, a bit of aggressive um, game behaving for uh, several of matches worth noting for. But either way, that's saying something. So yeah, yeah let's give my our final thoughts of... Uh, you know, Mario Slam Basketball, despite we're not exactly done with the game yet. I will say, I actually do enjoy it for quite a bit, despite it does have some issues, but let's ta start with the positives first. I will say, I do like the courts in this game, especially noticeable as like a different variety when it comes to theming and stuff, which I will say, I do appreciate about that. And on top of all that stuff though, I really enjoyed the music in this game, especially it's almost like a catchy, uh aspect about the forms of this entire game. I really do love uh, Junior Street music, as well as the, uh, uh, I would say Sherbet Land uh, music as well, and uh, Mario Stadium music as well, and especially noticeable with the character selection screen music. Oh man, it just brings me back so many memories when I first got the game on the original cartridge version back in 2007, alongside with Warrior Master of the Skies, but Let's not get ourselves for Warrior Master of Disguise, because it is by far the most disappointing Warrior games I've ever played. Next to uh, Game & Warrior for the Wii U, just because, you know, Game & Warrior to me though, looks nothing like it forms the proper WarriorWare game for me. Because, obviously, we've already explained about this a lot in the past, but... Either way though, that's just entirely in my opinion about it, but either way. And uh, the gameplay itself goes, uh, it's actually quite fun, especially that we got ourselves a proper Mario basketball game after the events of their special guests in the forms of in uh, NBA uh, Street version 3, specifically on the GameCube version, because in that game you do able to have the uh, ability to play. Not only as Mario, but also Luigi and Peach as well. Which, don't forget, this also applies onto SSX on Tour, also on the GameCube as well. Oh yeah, exactly, because that was actually a cool feature back in the day. In the forms of in, I can't even believe it's been about 20 years ago since when that happened or something. Or possibly lesser than that? Mind you, I haven't exactly looked upon that much of it since then. But either way, well, as far as the, um, positives positives goes. I think that's as far as we can say about it, although I do like the character roster in the game too. But aside from all that stuff though, the only negative things I can think about the game is that the computer players can sometimes felt a bit too much for my liking, especially with how uh, hard turning comes into play. And on top of that, the controls wise might give you a lot of hand cramps if you play the game long enough. But Aside from all that stuff though, I think it's a good game, at least to me anyway though. Now as you can see on this ending sequence right there, it shows us not only Mario, Luigi and Peach, but also Ninja, White Mage and Black Mage in that particular thank you for playing screen. So, pretty cool ending I might add. And speaking of those three, we able to have the alternative costumes for not only for Ninja, but also for White Mage and Black Mage as well. And also, we can now play the CPU level on Pro Mode. So, yeah, I guess that pretty much stopped up as such. So, yeah, join us tomorrow for more of Let's Play of Mario Slam Basketball for the Nintendo DS, is that we're about to show you guys some extra stuff of how this game offers us to. Uh, let's get started with the forms of unlockable stages first, especially with our very final character in the game, because it gives us some plenty of hints thanks to the credits. So we'll see you guys until tomorrow. Later, dudes.